The RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate is a rear shock that we love here at the Lost Co. But today, we are super excited to share the brand new, completely redesigned Super Deluxe Ultimate that's packed with some crazy new tech. I'm Mike, and in this video, I'm going to share the changes and new features to the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate air and coil shocks and tell you what we think about them. What's up everybody? As you probably know, the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate rear shock in both air and coil has been a very, very popular shock out on the trails. RockShox just did a great job of making that shock just extremely high performing, but also very, very simple to set up and adjust and live with. You can also uh, service it at home very easily. So with all those points taken into consideration, it's just a awesome shock that is in a very simple package that people really loved. However, RockShox went a little wild this year and they released a whole bunch of new tech, not only in their forks from their Pike, Lyric, and Zeb, but they also took a lot of that technology and actually designed it in conjunction with the new RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate rear shocks. We've still got the air and the coil version. And yes, both of these are now somehow better. Good job, RockShox. I don't know how you did it, but the features that we're gonna be talking about are actually really exciting. You know that we love suspension here at the Lost Co. And seeing a company like RockShox make these little improvements over time, it's, it's pretty sweet because uh, it's these little tiny improvements from year to year, revision to revision, that makes the really cool jam-packed tech that we get to ride on the trails, and it's a heck of a time. So let's get into these new features and see what all the hubbub is about and talk about if this is going to be a truly better shock for you or not. Now, like I was saying, a lot of people really like the simplicity about the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate shocks, and they were definitely a simple package. You had the RCT damper, which just had rebound adjustment, low speed compression adjustment, and then a two position climb switch to make it easier to get up the hill. Now, these brand new versions of this shock has the RC2T damper. So we now have some new adjustments added. So now we not only have low speed compression adjustment and rebound adjustment, just like the previous version, but now we also have adjustable high speed compression, which is a huge win, I think, um, because this is a high performance shock. And I definitely have heard from people here at the shop, including myself, and then some of our customers, wishing that their Super Deluxe Ultimate was just a little bit more adjustable. However, these shocks did get technically more complex and more adjustable, but in typical rock shocks fashion, they somehow did it in some crazy board meeting and engineering, you know, email chain or Slack conversation that they still made the shock very simple with these added adjustments and it didn't actually really make it any harder to set up. All right, how the heck did rock shocks make a more adjustable and more complex shock that's still easy to set up? Well, let me explain by showing the actual adjustments. First off, let's talk about compression. We've got low speed compression adjustment right here on the side of the piggyback, high speed compression right on the front of the piggyback, and that's the same between both the air and the coil. Now, both of these, yes, there are more adjustments than the previous version. We have low and high speed, but both of them have the same range of adjustments. Low speed compression, five positions. High speed compression adjustment, five positions. So the same on both of them. Also, not only is it easy to wrap your head around with just five positions on both, but also they both have very distinct lines of where the position actually is. So there's no guessing and writing down a bunch of crazy notes on where the heck you're at in your adjustments. You just know if you're right in the middle neutral position or if you have plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. Very, very easy to set it and see exactly where the heck you're at. And in true RockShox fashion, just like the previous version and also all the dampers in their forks, when you do one click of compression or one click of rebound, it makes an actual difference. Some other brands that have a whole bunch of adjustments on their shocks, you kind of have to hunt around two clicks here, three clicks, four clicks, and, and go back and forth to actually tell if you know what it's doing, if it's making a difference on how it's reacting to the trail. But with RockShox, I'm not kidding. You know, I've ridden these a couple times now and a lot of time on the past version. Um, if you do one click of compression, one click of rebound, it makes an immediate noticeable difference in how it's reacting to the trail. So with that said, five positions of compression in both the low speed and high speed, super easy to see where it's at and very noticeable differences in each click makes it extremely easy to set up. And then outside of compression, you also have just a single rebound adjustment right on top of the air shock where it was with the old version. And then on the bottom of the coil version right here, you technically have more clicks of rebound on these new Super Deluxe Ultimates than before, but still just a single circuit of rebound. So even though there's a couple more clicks, I think it's gonna be more easily fine-tuned and easier to set and forget now that you have a little bit extra range. 
And also worth mentioning is it still has a two position climb switch. Simply just leave it on the open or unlocked mode for when you are going down and you wanna suck up every little bit of chatter on the trail and then simply just click it up into the lock mode, climb up the hill. It does stiffen it out quite a bit. On my initial testing with this, it has a very, very firm pedal platform, which I really, really liked. Um, it's a little bit more firm of a lever. RockShox says they did that for a more definite click. So you really know when you're locked out and you know when you're unlocked. All right, next up, I'm gonna share probably the coolest feature and I think everybody here at the shop's favorite new feature that we're most excited about. And we're talking about HBO, and I'm not talking about the TV channel, I'm talking about hydraulic bottom out, baby. This is freaking rad, let's jump into it. That is right, these shocks now have hydraulic bottom out, which is huge. You don't see this too often in the industry. It's a great feature that some super high-end shocks have built into them, but uh, you gotta pay a lot of money for those. But now you get that super premium option on these pretty dang affordable shocks from Rock Shocks. So we are pumped on this. Good job, Rock Shocks engineers, listening to what the people want. So let's actually get into how this works on both these things. First up, let's cover the HBO hydraulic bottom out on the air shock. It works for the last 25% of the shock's stroke, and it is not adjustable. So it's basically just a built-in feature. There's no adjustability to it, which means that you have another feature, but don't have to worry about actually setting it up yourself. It's kind of just there. They already set it and forget it for you. Worth noting is that the HBO feature is not available on universally sized aftermarket super deluxe air shocks, and it's only an option for bike companies to offer on their builds. However, if you have a brand new bike that came stock with a RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate on it, don't jump the gun. Don't assume that you have the hydraulic bottom out on it. It's an option for OEM, so like bike manufacturers, to either choose to have it or not, depending on how their bike is set up. So if they have a bike that's already super progressive, then they're probably not gonna put the HBO. But if they have a bike that's either digressive or linear um, and can use that extra bottom out support, then they're probably gonna opt in for that hydraulic bottom out. All right, now let's look at the coil version's hydraulic bottom out as it works a little bit different. Not only is it adjustable, but it also works for the last 20% of the shock stroke, unlike the air versions, which works for the last 25% of the stroke. The hydraulic bottom out control is adjustable on the coil version and not adjustable on the air version because you can easily make an air shock more progressive by adding air or adding volume reducers or tokens. You can't do that on a coil shock, so they have adjustable hydraulic bottom out control for that reason. Now don't worry, we are adding another adjustment to the coil version, but just like the compression adjustment, it only has five positions. So yeah, five positions of adjustable hydraulic bottom out control and five positions of both low speed and high speed compression. So super easy across the board. And again, it is very easy to see exactly where you're at in that adjustable hydraulic bottom out control. All Super Deluxe Ultimate coil shocks will feature this adjustable HBO, both aftermarket and OE. This is truly an awesome new feature because it's going to make running a coil shock so much more accessible to those folks that want to know what a coil shock is all about, but they have one of those bikes that are very, very linear and they just aren't really compatible. They don't play too nice with the linear characteristics of how a coil shock works. So you're gonna see a lot more coil shocks on people's bikes and I think that that is a huge win for rock shocks. Good job. All right, now let's go back over to the air version and talk about some cool new features with that air spring that we kind of just touched on and how you can make it more progressive. Just like the new Pike, Lyric, and Zeb Ultimates, they now have new air springs called the Debonair Plus. You now have two different options for air cans. You have either the linear or the progressive air cans. And within those air cans, you can adjust the volume reducers by zero to four in the positive side or zero to one in the negative side for even more tuning. There's also a brand new bottom out bumper. So in case you seriously cook it and try to impress your friends and hit that new jump going mock chicken and, and, and overshoot it by like 40 feet, show that video of Tor trying that triple on cedar dust. <laughs> um, and you somehow do make it past the progressive air can that's loaded with volume spacers and make it past the hydraulic bottom out, then that new bottom out bumper is going to make it so that you don't have that super harsh ankle breaking bottom out. And again, another feature that is shared between the new RockShox lineup of forks and these shocks here is that there are longer bushings for more bushing overlap. And what basically that means is that there is more bushing contact between the stanchions and the bushing within the body of the shock, which reduces binding when the shock is flexing and therefore makes the shock more smooth. 
All right, last but not least, it looks like RockShox is making it a heck of a lot easier to actually change the internal shim stack tune on their shocks for shops like us who can do in-depth suspension work. So if you do buy an aftermarket shock that has, you know, X tune on it, and you want a more frame specific tune for your bike, then it looks like we're gonna be able to source those shim stacks a lot more easier, and we can definitely set it up specific to your bike if that's what you're looking for. However, a RockShox engineer actually explained to us how the range of adjustments is a lot more broad on these new sets of shocks. Going into the plus two clicks or minus two clicks of compression in either low speed or high speed actually brings you right onto the brink of either the stiffer or the softer tune. So that's worth mentioning. All right, well, there you have it. That is a rundown of the new features that RockShox has packed into these new shocks. But how does this feel on the trail? Well, we did have these shocks here for a few days for testing. It's still kind of hard to get parts these days, especially sample parts. Um, so we only had it for a few days. And when I was riding it, uh, it was very, very, very wet and sloppy. It is so wet and sloppy out. Not the best conditions for damper performance testing. So with that said, I don't want to get into an in-depth like technical analysis of how this thing rode on the trail. But let me just start by saying this. The experience that I did have, you know, getting this thing set up, Everything that they said was true. All the clicks in the adjustments with the compression and rebound, all that stuff, super easy to set up. From one click to another, super noticeable. And I am very confident that I can get this thing fully set up in a day or two. And honestly, I think that this is going to be a excellent option for a rear shock for anybody that wants a ultra high performing shock, but without the need to bring a little notepad out and rack your brain to set this thing up over the course of a couple weeks. So great job, Rock Shocks. This is going to make a lot of people happy. And honestly, if this thing just rides equally as good as the old Super Deluxe Ultimate and just has these new features jam packed into the body, then I am stoked. I think everyone's going to be stoked and there is no way that this thing performs worse than before. So moving forward, this is awesome. I am so stoked to see what RockShox keeps on coming out with. All right, well, I think that's about everything that we know about these here RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Rear Shocks, both on paper and on the trail. Which feature are you most excited about? Let us know in the comments below because I think I know what we're most excited about, but we want to know what you're excited about. And if you want to learn for yourself how this shock feels on the trail without waiting for me to do a review video on it, click this link right here, head over to our website at thelostco.com and snag one for your own bike. We've got free shipping over 49 bucks in the USA, same day shipping on orders placed before 2.30 Pacific time, Monday through Friday. If you liked learning about these brand new shocks, click that like button. And if you want to learn about a whole bunch of new mountain bike stuff in the future, click that subscribe button with that little bell notification so that you don't miss out on our future videos. All right, until next time, I'm going to take these shocks, hit the trail, and ride them some more. Talk to you next time. Later.